Hey everybody, uh, I'm back. So after a long hiatus, I'm going to do another tutorial on this. Now it's not going to be the A star like I had promised. Um, I'm going to get back into the groove. Just want to add some small little things just to get going again. Um, I'm going to incorporate a health bar. So we're going to add a health bar to our character. Um, and it's going to be a simple class just to kind of show you, you know, again how cool it is to have things set up so modular and, and with classes and modules like we have. Um, this way we can kind of just create a health bar class and you know really simply with just a few lines of code implement that class into any creature that we create from this point on. Um, after this I might have one more tutorial before I start doing A star. Um, I was a bit uh, hesitant because the A star method that I was using was not it's not a uh, like a a method that somebody else has made and and I'm just kind of following along I was kind of just taking the concept of A star and implementing it in my own way um, which I'm not you know a great amazing programmer so I don't think that the way I programmed it is the best way to program it it gets the job done really well with one entity, possibly even you know maybe twenty or thirty entities on the uh, in the level could be using this method um, without bogging down. But once you get a little bit more than that, then the the system will kind of slow down, especially if they're all trying to um, go to paths at the same time. Um, so for right now, I'm just going to let's just do a health bar get that going and then I will push on to another tutorial I think what I'll do is a mini map for the tutorial after this um, and then I will implement the A star method uh, for pathfinding uh, and then yeah and then from there we'll just keep pushing on and see what kind of game we want to make add some enemies do whatever we want to do um, so let's first add a health bar to this guy so we will go into our player class. We've got we've got everything going here. I'm going to add a uh, another folder within our en entities. That's where I have it. This is kind of the structure that I have. Uh, it is in entities alongside our creatures and our helpers so let's this is our project here we will go to entities and I will have to explore here and add that folder uh, I'm just using notepad plus plus um, simply because I'm separating the panes and I have kind of what I want to work on on the right over here that's why the uh, video might be a little bit different this this time around. So I'm going to create a new folder in our entities package. We will go call it helpers. Inside of here, um, yeah. So we've got our helpers. I'm going to create two two uh, files in our helpers folder one will be helper.js and the other will be healthbar.js all right now that we've got those in here let's open them both up First, we'll start by defining a helper. So we'll say define. And we're going to require the entity class because though this is a health bar, it's actually going to be an entity as well because it's going to share a lot of properties of an entity. So we'll call this a helper. Set it equal to entity dot extend. We'll have our const our a uh, constructor. And it's going to take an x and a y, and just pass that to the super. 
that's really all we're going to have for this um, so that we can kind of come in here if we ever want to change some things about any helpers. Uh, we don't have to change the root entity class. We can come into here and make changes and add um, you know, methods and things to our helpers. Oops, so we want to return helper. So that is really all we're going to do with uh, with that. Let me close some of these things down that aren't part of what we're working on. Okay, so that's the base helper class. So I'm going to, while we're working in it, I'm going to open up our app.js and add helper helper and that's an app slash classes slash entities oh entities slash helper oh slash helpers slash helper there we go so now we have access to the helper now let's define the health bar. Now this is actually should be um, simpler than um, than what you think. The most like the thing that's going to be the longest about this is the fact that we're going to have a bunch of properties and, and stuff that we can change when we actually create a health bar. Um, so we'll be able to set attributes uh, about a health bar in the player so that we can make it look how we want to look uh, in the actual player class. So we'll define and we're going to require helper and we're going to create health bar And do we want a health bar? Yeah, we'll do a health bar. And it's equal to helper.extend. And we'll get our constructor in here. We're going to take a handler, an entity, and some options or properties. We'll call them props. And we're also going to have a render function that takes the graphics brush and we're going to have another method called update all right so I believe this is actually going to be everything that is required for uh, our health bar. So we'll return health bar. So some things that we will do let's save bar default nodes is equal to 10. So I'm going to put some defaults here, and then I'll explain them. Oh, man. Put it in the wrong spot. Default. So nodes, this is going to be how many, um, how many like health, health pieces there are in the in the health bar. So you could have ten, and you know, and then what you know, if there's ten, that means that you'll see ten separate little boxes that represent the full health. And those boxes will either be colored or not colored, depending on if that if that health block um, is full or not. So You'll see a little bit more once I start building the rest of it, but essentially this is just going to be the default amount of health blocks within the health bar. Um, I'm sure if you've played any games, you you know with health bars, 
that aren't um, like that don't look like analog or whatever they look more digital where it's just like multiple chunks um, to represent your health you'll see what I mean all right so let's set the handler is equal to the passed in handler let's set the entity that is going to be um, using this health bar to the passed in entity and then we will uh, set the start health equal to the entity's health this dot nodes so um, they're going to be set to um, we're also going to set another thing called total nodes so this first one is going to be the set amount of nodes and the other one is going to be regardless of what the nodes are currently set to it will always represent the total amount of nodes that we um, that we have for a health bar and we're going to set it equal to prop dot nodes all right so render on full so this is going to be a property that's either true or either on or off and it's going to say whether we show the health bar if the entity's uh, health is full so sometimes if an entity has not been hit or anything like that there's no point in showing the health bar we know that it's a full health bar we only need to show the health bar um, if they've taken damage so we can pull this from the properties that were passed in and we can set if they if that property isn't set we'll just default it to on this dot width is going to be equal to property dot width or we'll just default it to 75 this dot height is going to be equal to prop dot height or we'll default it to 10 this dot x offset is equal to prop dot X offset and you know what's these properties down here I don't think we will need them out of the ones up here we're gonna put them down here when we're done so I'm gonna set this down here and we'll make a little tweak because we won't actually use these default values in this class we'll reference them when we are um, creating an instance of the health bar so you'll see again once we get to that point the X offset property or we're just going to default that to the entities get width function divided by two plus this dot width divided by two. So what this is going to do is automatically center. Unless we want to change that, we can we'll um, center it. Oops, to the uh, entity. So it's always centered this dot y offset is equal to prop dot y offset or 10 and I believe the bigger the number is the higher up off of the character it will be this dot color will be equal to prop dot color now I don't know right now and what I what I've got currently what I've been playing with doesn't have a default color so I believe some of these will have to be set um, any of the ors are are properties that have a default value set to them. Um, split is equal to prop mm, prop dot split or zero. Now I want to say the split is the um, the split is going to be the distance between nodes like the little gap between the nodes I think so we've defaulted them to have no no gap between them so it'll just show up as a solid bar um, and you'll see again as we go uh, this dot node width is equal to this dot width divided by this dot nodes so we're going to make sure that they fit through uh, they fill in the whole bar this dot fade time oh let's do height first 
node height is equal to this dot height node height is equal to this dot height. These ones kind of seem like they would make more sense based on the name fade time. This is going to be how long, I believe in seconds, it takes after an uh, health has been changed for the uh, for the health bar to fade. Now I don't know if there's a default. I have to take a good look again to see if I've set it so that it won't like whether it fades or not. Um, so yeah, it may it may not fade um, if we set it to one. So I'm gonna set the default there to one. This dot opacity is equal to prop dot opacity or one, meaning it should stay opaque. Or sorry, you should be able to see it fully and not see behind it. This dot border is equal to prop dot border or show is equal to true. So this is whether we're going to show the border, the color of the border, which is going to be black to de as default, and the width of the border, which will default to three. So this will also be a object that we can pass in with properties for the border itself of the health bar. So the health bar cannot have a border. The health bar can have whatever color border we want. That's all up to us. So this is setting all of the properties for the health bar. Now everything that's actually going to, you know, render and show the health bar, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be set in our render function. So mm -hmm. let's move on. So in the render, we'll say this dot opacity is equal to this dot or times equals times equals this dot fade time so I think by setting it to one well yeah by setting it to a default to one it's going to stay where we can see it the whole time so g dot global alpha so we're gonna set the alpha of everything that we draw or render from this point on so that's why we're setting it to this dot opacity. So if we set the opacity to 0.7, then everything that we're drawing for this um, bar will be set to that opacity. So next thing we're going to check if render on full is equal to on, or if this dot entity dot health is less than this dot start. So meaning if it's less than the starting health, then we're going to automatically display it. If this dot border dot show. Now again, this will fade if we have a fade set as well. So even though it start it shows up, uh, it will fade away as well. Um, so if this dot border dot show, so if we want to show a border, then we're going to say g dot fill style, if I can not mess up, style is equal to this dot border dot color. So we're setting the fill style to uh, the fill color essentially to the color that we want our border to be. And then we want to fill rectangle. It's going to be this dot entity dot get x minus this dot x off minus this dot handler dot get game uh, get game camera sorry there's a lot to this one this dot handler dot get game camera dot get x offset we're gonna minus from this the border dot width And then we're similarly going to say this dot ent dot get y minus this dot y offset. Subtract from that this dot get game camera 
dot get y offset and we're going to subtract from this the border if I can get to the end there uh, we're going to subtract this dot border dot width from this as well and then this dot width plus this dot border dot width and we'll times that by two so that the border width goes around the whole left or is on the left and the right so what we have essentially did is we're going to create a we're creating a box that's the color of the border but we're also going to make it the size of our health bar plus the width of the border that we've set on all sides. So that's where this times two comes in. We've subtracted, we've subtracted one set of the border widths right here, which subtracts it and puts it to the left um, of where our health bar is by the whatever the width of the um, border is. And then when we're setting the, the uh, width of this the width of this uh, square here that we're that we're rendering, we're going to also add to it two times the width, and you'll see that that will then, of course, put a uh, another border on the right side of the health bar, and then we're going to do the same thing for the height as well. So it'll be this dot height plus this dot border dot width times two. So what we've did, and this is kind of a long thing, so let's drop it down after each one of these. So essentially what we've did is we've positioned it with this, uh, these first two. Let's drop this down there. We've positioned the X to be whatever the x of the entity is minus the offset that we set which in our case we've set it to negative the width uh, half the width of the entity plus half the width of the health bar then we've also taken into consideration the offset of the camera so that it's wherever you know it's positioned on the screen based on our camera and then we're going to subtract the border width so that we can then um, set the width to add two times the border width. Um, so the width of this this frame essentially will be uh, encompassing all of the all of the health bar plus uh, three pixels on either side since we've defaulted to three. Now if we change that we can we can change that in the future. Um, and you can see this is just kind of me building the frame for the health bar. That's what that is. And we only do that if they want to show the border. The next thing to do is start adding those nodes. So for var i is equal to 0, i is less than this dot total nodes. And then we'll say i plus plus. And we'll draw set global alpha equal to 0.5 times this dot opacity so these what we're going to draw here is essentially a dead health node so this is like an what the nodes look like when you uh, this is what shows up when your health is been depleted so any of the nodes on the right side um, that have been depleted will show up with whatever we set here so g dot fill style is equal to this dot color. So what we're doing is just essentially whatever color it is, we're going to make the alpha of this half of whatever alpha the the main alpha is. Um, G dot fill rect. All right. Now let's try to get this to not be so uh, confusing, but. Let's let's just let's just see what we can do. So we're going to take negative this dot node width times this dot total nodes. 
we're going to add to that this dot split divided by 2 so whatever that split value we set was plus this dot total nodes times this dot node width plus this dot node width times i plus and plus this dot entity dot get x minus this dot x offset minus this dot handler dot get game camera dot get x <laughs> offset we're just positioning this thing all right essentially it's the same positioning from this point on from the get entity x it's the same positioning we did for the border except for we're not subtracting the border width um, and then before that what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, calculate the width of the nodes and the position of each node depending upon how many nodes we want in the health bar uh, so you'll see how this works again once we start rendering it we actually start rendering it uh, that is just for oops that's just for the X and this Let's do the Y. Y is going to be, um, we'll do this on a new line as well. This dot entity dot Y get Y minus this dot Y off minus this dot handler dot get game camera dot get y offset and the widths will be this dot node width minus this dot split and this dot height so the node split is just how what the separation between the nodes is Okay, then we will reset global alpha back equal to 1 times whatever the opacity is. Basically just resetting it back. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is copy what we have here in this for loop. We're going to copy it and remove the alphas. So the only difference is, is this one right here is going to not be out of total nodes, but just out of nodes. So now this one's going to always render all of the nodes just with a low opacity where this one afterwards on top of those is going to render whatever nodes are currently healthy so current healthy nodes that's why we're only going out of nodes because in our next function we will actually um, update how many nodes we have and that will be kind of what updates our health bar so on update, we're going to set this dot opacity equal to one. So even if there's a fade to it, it'll for a moment at least be full opacity. Then this dot nodes is equal to math dot ceiling. This dot total nodes times this dot entity dot health divided by this dot start. 
So this right here is going to reset how many nodes we have based on how many nodes we started with and uh, what the health is compared to what it was when it started. So this should, this actually should work as is. Um, what I'm going to do is take this, these variables down here, we're going to make these static, static properties of the health bar class, health bar dot, and health bar dot. All right, so that means that if we want to reference these default values when creating the health bar, we can just type in health bar dot default nodes, health bar dot default uh, y and x offsets. This stuff right here, I know it seems kind of nuts. Um, but it's it's just me positioning the nodes so that they um, line up inside of the health bar with the right offsets. The offsets just kind of get long and run on. Um, hopefully this is good. Um, I will go into the app and we will do health bar. Health bar. That's an app slash classes slash entities slash helpers slash health bar. And let's go into our player. So in our player, we now need to add health bar. health bar okay so I'm going to just grab some properties and paste them in that way you can kind of tweak them and change them if you want but I don't have to go through every single thing um, so we will create this dot health bar is equal to a new health bar. It's going to take handler, this as the entity, and we will say hb prop. So what those are going to be are these right here. So I've created an object and it has some of these settings. So the color, which is set to a light gray, the offset, the nodes, there's 50 nodes, so let's change this back to 10. All right, oops, let me plug this guy in. So those right there are default, or those are just some options that um, you can tweak and change. So render on full is off, so the, the bar won't render uh, until you actually take damage. So I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, and this, or I'll set it to render on full. There we go. I'll set it to render on full, which could be done by either setting this to on or just removing it since the default is on. Fade time is set to 0.95, so that means every every refresh it will fade away at this rate. Um, it has no split. Let's give it a split of one just to start out. And then all we need to do, we don't need to tick it, we only need to render it. So this should be G dot, oh actually it should just be this dot health bar dot render passing in G. Now let's see what this does. I'm sure that I didn't get it right the first time because when do I ever? Um, health bar on 37. And it says that it's missing a, an un, it, there's an unexpected health bar is not a constructor. Did I not? I returned health bar. All right, so we 
right here the right there's the problem let me make sure This needs to be encapsulated right here. I missed, I missed one of those, which means I also missed it right here on line 42. And helper on line nine. I forgot my closing to my define. All right, get game camera is not a function. This dot get game camera is not a function. This dot handler, I don't know why I didn't put handler. And that is, did I do that anywhere else? We'll find out. Oh, did we not reset? So we need to go in our health bar and reset opacity here. G dot global alpha is equal to one. So we have to reset the global alpha back to one so that the next things that we draw don't continue to get lower. Uh, so let's see. There we go. So the the health bar faded away. So let's turn off our fade. So we'll go into our player and set fade time. We can just comment it out. All right, so Let's see. Let's add, we might have to add a function to our creature class that would help us out. We're gonna add a function called take damage so that we can kind of see. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go back into our creature class real quick. And I'm going to create a function called take damage. So take damage is going to be a function that takes in a damage value, sets this dot health minus equal to damage. Then we'll just automatically say if the type of this dot health bar is not equal to undefined, so later we might actually just call a event listener um, in the health bar for updates. So we can just kind of call an event whenever we take damage. Um, but for now, let's just do this. This dot health bar dot update. So we will do that. And we can even just say if this dot health is less than or equal to zero, then we'll say this dot die, and this, and we'll just say die is a function. The console dot logs, you died. Okay, so just for now, that's all it'll do. 
Okay, so essentially every time we take damage, we subtract the damage value from the total health, and then if there is a health bar, we run the health bar's update function. That's all there is to that. Okay, so one thing, I don't know exactly why our health bar... Oh. Unexpected identifier 108. I did not put a comma after this. Our health bar should have a border one so why is our border not being rendered let's go to health bar if this dot render on full or this dot entity okay So that's good. Now border this dot border dot show. Okay, fill style. So this dot entity dot get x minus this dot x offset minus this dot get game camera dot get x offset minus the border width. That's perfectly fine. Uh, then, because that's exactly what we're using for the other thing minus the border width, the y, this dot y off. I don't think it was called y offset. I think it was called y off. And that might be why we're not seeing a border. Still no border. compare it to the health bar that I've already built Border width, get X offset, get Y offset right here. That we need to make sure that we're actually calling functions. All right, so now the only thing is I don't see. I don't see these ones being rendered down here. So that means something's going on down here. I'm going to copy, paste, move the alpha from both of these. I think I can pull this down here. Not that that would not matter. Because we should have white bars showing up there. Because our health bar is set with a bright, or with a white, egg white kind of um, color to our health bar nodes. So why are you not showing up? 
total nodes. Ah, this needs to be nodes, but that doesn't make sense. I just, yeah, that's because I just copied it. Nodes. All right. Let's see. Nodes are set. They should be white. They're not showing up. Um, let me keep looking and see. This can go inside here. So these get rendered first. The background nodes get rendered first. See that doesn't make sense to me because if the if this block is running correctly unless nodes no and then nodes have to be set let's do a console log console dot log this dot nodes. Let's see how many nodes we have. Ten. Ten. Okay. Uh, color prop dot color let's make sure that that's right first prop dot color prop dot color or let's do white Let me see what's going on. All right, so after moving some stuff around, I realized I didn't need to do any of that. I set the default to white. Yeah, but all I need to do is spell style correctly. For all of you people who know how to spell style, you're like, bro, you can't say fill sty. Yeah, I get it. I'm dumb. So, yeah, so here we go. And let's prove that this is working. So we've added that take damage um, function. So how do we test this to see if it's working? We can go anywhere and try it out. Let's go right into the health bar and just make this little function here. So I just set interval and I created an anonymous function that says entity, so the entity we passed in, dot take damage, passing in two damage every five seconds. So with this little piece of code, we can run it, wait five seconds, and we should see the health depleting. Boom, two. Four, and then let's see what happens when we die. Six, eight, and bam. You died. Okay, so the health bar is working. So one thing, let's try this as well. So we've got 10 nodes by default. What happens if we take those 10 and make them 100 nodes with zero split? And then in our health bar where we're doing this test, instead of point, or instead of two, let's take point one off every 500 milliseconds. 
now what we're going to get is what should look like a more uh, you know a less analog type look so it's slowly depleting it looks like it's just draining so with this we've got we, we can accomplish a bunch of different styles to our health bar so in this case we've got you know a more of a draining health bar instead of one that notches off um, just by adding more nodes so we can do a lot of things now just by changing some of these settings in here so let's set the border to black and let's set we'll keep nodes at a hundred and set our width down to two color blackish so now we've got a thin border around our health bar the other thing too let's take our this little function that we wrote let's take off one every five seconds again but let's set our fade back in so now what should happen So it shows up, it fades away. We should take damage, and it pops up and fades away. Pops up and fades away. So let's lower these nodes down a bit. Let's lower them down to 20 with a split of one. So you can see the nodes, how they work. Let's give them a split of two and go back in our health bar just take this take damage uh, actually let's just keep it from fading for now I want to show you so we've got these nodes and see that split gives us a defined separation between them so we're taking one damage away but as you see we've taken one damage but yet we're taking two notches at a time that's because our health is 10 and we've, we're representing a full 10 hit points within 20 nodes. So whenever we take one hit point away, we're actually taking two nodes. So that's why, though we are taking one, we're seeing it notch down by two. The same thing can be said the more nodes we add, the more nodes represent a single hit point. So if we come back to this health bar and we, instead of taking one, we just take 0.5. And let's take 0.5 every two seconds you'll see that we just get one notch every hit that's because we're out of 10 so when we set the health of a player um, which I believe the health is defaulted for creatures so we set default health to 10 Uh, and we're not actually changing that here so we could even add it so that health gets added to the uh, to the player but let's just up the default health to 100 okay so now the default health is 100 go into our health bar We'll take down one hit point every second. Our health bar is still going to have 20 nodes. So what we should see, every second it's taking down hit points. But we won't actually see a node go away until we've hit enough hit points to actually cause the node to go away. Um, so every second it's pulling. So if I were to say that there were a hundred nodes, 
now we have 100 nodes with 100 hit points taking one hit point away every second. We should actually see it depleting every second. So in our split, our split actually goes away when we when we have too many nodes for the split. So yeah, you can see that it drains it. Now one hit point equals one node. The nodes are touching, so you can see it draining. And this follows our character around because it's using the character's position to render itself. And it is very little processing going on at all. The only time it even really does anything other than render itself is when we actually are running that update function. All right, so this was longer than I wanted it to be, but um, but it's another tutorial, guys, and I will be doing more in the future. Uh, I will get the past our algorithm going on. I think the next thing that I want to do is add a uh, mini map. And so that we can take a look at the uh, the mini map. Now I think I'm going to also have a bigger map because this map is really tiny. Um, yeah, this map's pretty tiny. But A star is working well enough. I will uh, I will work on that. Uh, in maybe next couple tutorials. So one thing I think we can do, I'm going to check my entity manager. I think it still works the same. So in the entity manager, we, we have an add entities. What I wanna add is a remove entities so that we can actually remove an entity that's died. Oops. So let me add that. Maybe we can get this done in the next three minutes. So we're going to say remove entity with a comma. And that's a function that's going to take an entity. We'll say for i is equal to zero, i is less than entities dot length, uh, i plus plus. Say var e is equal to entities at position i, we'll say if e is the entity that we are passing in, we'll say entities dot splice i one. That just means whatever index i we're at, and we only want to remove one index from the array. So this should technically remove an entity from our entity manager, stop it from rendering it, stop it from ticking. It should just be gone, not doing anything. So that means that if we go back into our creature class down here, where we have created the take damage and we call die, we should be able to replace console.log with this dot handler dot get world dot get entity manager dot remove entity passing in this as the entity. And let's see what happens when our character dies. So first I'm gonna take this health bar and we're going to deplete it by 10 every second. So we can see what happens. See if we get an error. this dot handler dot get world so this dot handler dot get world do we we have a get world in our handler get world get entity manager do we have get entity manager in our get world world get entity manager yeah we have that remove entity let's go into our entity manager remove entity is 
part of it. So it's saying get world handler dot get world. Mm. One oh six in creature. We should have remove entity should be callable. Get entity manager. This dot handler. Get world. Yeah. That is strange. This should be fine. I'm not sure why. There it goes. I must not have saved it right. So, yeah, so this type get world, get entity manager, dot remove entity, and once it's dead, it's gone. So we could also have it trigger some sort of event in our die function, or even in a remove entity, it could do some sort of action whenever an entity is removed. But for now, this is cool. Once the character, is, once the health is depleted, it dies. So I'm going to remove this out, and we will trigger that on a different event, some sort of other event, maybe some sort of collision with an enemy or something will cause it to take damage. We will figure that out once we start building on. But now we've got a health bar and we can play around and tweak all of the properties of the health bar. And yeah, we can you can make the health bar look however you want. So that'd be cool. So why don't you guys uh, post a picture or a link to a picture or something if you can of what you guys make your health bars look like. Remember, you have your nodes here, you have position based off of the character, you could change the color and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, video or picture showing your health bar. That'd be pretty awesome. All right, I will see you guys soon in another tutorial.